Brooke here from Clear Creek Farm and today we are going to do the trailering video that we were asked to do um, about a month ago. So come along as we do that. July of 2018. Um, it's actually an old alpaca trailer. Um, we got a really good deal on it. We added some of these pens and I'll talk about that more in a little bit. But um, it's a super nice solidly made trailer. Um, the frame is steel and then all the outside is all aluminum so we shouldn't have to worry about rust for a long time. Um, but it's it's really nice because it's it allows us to go places where we really weren't able to go before. We had a small old 1970s hog trailer that it worked, but it was getting wore out. So we were really lucky to find this one. Um, the trailer originally came with uh, three pens, three big pens. So the, the middle gates that you'll see in the middle, so like these gates here, there was two sets of those that originally came with the trailer. We added these other gates, these gates and the middle gates here. Um, we had those fabricated at a local welding place. Um, I think I think all of it costs like around $500, which wasn't terrible. But now instead of three big pens, we have six smaller pens, which is nicer because then we can fit more goats in. Um, obviously bucks need their own pens, so if we only had three big pens, we would be limited to two because a buck would get uh, one pen to himself. Um, so it's nice to have smaller pens for the goats. We do not tie them up when we're traveling. They get their own pens. Sometimes we'll double up a pen um, if a goat is, you know, they're used to being housed with one another, we'll throw them in the pen together. We can generally fit, depending on size, three smaller goats per pen or two bigger goats per pen. Um, obviously, like I just said, bucks get their own pen, so that way there's no fighting or breeding going on while we're going down. <laughs> so last year, um, Jason added these racks on here before nationals, so that way we would have uh, room to basically bring all of our crap and um, they were good I made him make sure that they didn't scuff the side of the trailer up because this thing was immaculate when we bought it um, but usually we'll put younger animals under these so that way they're not getting caught in them and then the older animals will go up front and in the back um, and then there's the roof vents obviously some trailers are uh, super fancy and they come with air conditioning and all that stuff. We don't have that. We're not that we're not that high class But the roof vents work work well um, the, On this particular model the trailer the roof is off fiberglass, so it stays relatively cool in here um, When it's hot so they're not boiling which is what I like about this trailer um, and then obviously the two big windows on the side with the sliding glass, which allows airflow. This trailer also has two escape doors, basically, for the two front pens. So we just load them up for, through these doors, not through the back. Um, it makes it super simple and super easy. Um, these, these gates will actually remove. So we can pull them out if we have to have a bigger pen for some reason. Um, so all these gates were removed. We can take all the gates out of the back of the trailer and have one big space if we wanted to. And then there's also a door. Well, it's locked from the inside. That goes into the tack area from in here so we can access this area, the animal area from the tack the tack area as well. And then here's the tack area. Um, it's fairly decent size. Uh, it could be a little bigger, 
but you know beggars can't be choosers um, but we can fit all of our stuff in here just fine and then it has a bunk up there with actually a mattress there isn't that much space between the mattress and the ceiling but it works in a pinch <laughs> we have to use it um, and that was kind of one of the big things that sold us on this trailer was it the fact that it was a gooseneck um, it wasn't a bumper pull so we did have the extra added storage of the actual front part that goes over the truck so basically when we're um, traveling long distances with the goats we will uh, put hay in with them we have buckets that Jason cut holes in with chains and clips that we can just put around the gates so that way they have access to hay. We don't give them feed while we're traveling. Um, it tends to, especially if you're going for longer than eight hours, you don't really want to give them feed because uh, the sugars and the proteins go to the joints and it makes them really super stiff when they get out. Uh, so hay, if you're gonna be on long distances, don't give them any feed. We also don't provide water in there with them while we're da going down the road because it just sloshes everywhere and gets everything all wet. However, if we are on the road for longer than eight hours, we will stop at a truck stop or gas station somewhere and we will offer them water and buckets and then we will take the buckets away before we head back out again. cameras in the trailer and uh, we'll put that into the video if you are interested in learning how to make the buckets there is also a video on that we'll go ahead and leave a link below for that uh, thank you again for coming along I uh, hope you enjoyed the video uh, have a great weekend